The early phases of a software project matters the most. And software projects are quite like building bridges. And how this works together, I'm gonna to explain in this video. My name is Till Carlos, and today we're gonna to talk about how the early phases in software projects matter the most, and the seven things we need to take into consideration in order to make a software project succeed. And those are all things we can do early on in the project. And first I wanna explain the analogy of building bridges. So when I was in high school, we all played this game called Bridge Builder. And you can check out the YouTube video here. The general idea was that you would basically have a software and you build the bridge by drawing lines. And this is actually very perfect for our analogy with software projects because there are a lot of things that those things have in common and I want to talk about them real quick. And let's dive into the first thing already. The first thing is to choose the developer wisely. So the first developer in a software project is the most important person. And it's important to see what kind of person we're hiring for a project because software always sounds the same like someone is a react pro or they know python or django or they've worked with elixir or whatever all these frameworks are somewhat buzzwords and we can say yeah we have a good react developer but it really matters what kind of projects this first developer did early on so for example if a developer worked on a complex project with tens of engineers then they build a very complex structure like this here and this is something that they can replicate and apply to your project. On the other hand, the same developer who might also say they're a React Pro, maybe they are really good at React, but they only have done something that is such a small thing like that. And now you're trying to have them build something much bigger. If the first developer is chosen wrong, they can totally underestimate a project and build structures that are not sufficient to actually get it to the point where you want it to be. One more thing to the first developer, especially with inexperienced project managers or people who don't really care how the cake is baked, they just want to have the cake. People who are not technical usually just let the developer choose the framework. And that makes sense because if the developer doesn't know the framework or doesn't know the language, they usually cannot make the first project with that and bring it to to production. So the developer usually also chooses the technology and this heavily impacts everything else in the project. So for example, if you have someone who builds, let's just say, stay, stay with the example we just had, you have a developer that chooses Elixir as a framework to code your software. That might be a great choice. It might be even an important choice if you have, let's say you want to build something real time for the web. The problem is that for the rest of the project lifecycle, you will now need to hire Elixir developers and you have to take into consideration how much they cost and how easy you can get them. So the first developer is super important because they are gonna put the groundwork in and that will impact all the rest of the development. The second thing is important to take into account is the project management style. And I learned this from Moritz. We interviewed him in another video at the Ruby conference, which you can find on my blog, delcarlos.com. We have all the information up here in the post section. You can see all these interviews here. Ask nine devs. So Moritz said, software projects fail if the project managers cannot decide if they want to do agile or if they want to do waterfall. I'm gonna give you a quick example. Let's say we have a waterfall project. Before we actually start coding, we need to plan the whole thing out. We need to know exactly where we, where we want to go. So this endpoint needs to be totally defined. And then we need to choose what is the structure we're putting on top of that. So how are we going to reach that? And then the development team just puts these things in place and then we're there. Let's say we wanted to be agile. Agile means we are building the first thing and then we do a demo, give this to the client, they give us feedback. Then we build the second thing and then the third, and then basically we go into iterations and at any point the product management team can decide in what direction the project should go. Of course, at one point there's a lot of technical debt and the, the product cannot take any hard turns in order to like, let's say if they want to do a pivot, then it's going to be hard to move all this technical debt on onwards. But let's say if the goal is somewhat defined, you just like minor adjustments and then you also get to the goal. The problem with this approach is that you sometimes it's just very hard to know how long it will take and also every single iteration should not cause too much overhead and should not change the direction, should not give too much influence. At the same time, enough influence for the developer to know about the second or the next phase of it. It is totally fine to do any style you want, but more it's really stressed the point that you need to decide on what style you want to have. If you are choosing no style or if you are choosing not to, not to decide, meaning you are kind of going with the flow, you might end up with a project where the developer thinks it's agile, so they're just building the next thing in order to ship something. 
but some other stakeholders really want to have a deadline met. And that deadline might not might never be, be reached because there are just not enough cycles in between to test against that deadline. So at, when the deadline comes, there might be a project that, that kind of works, but it, it's not fulfilling all the needs that it should. The third thing which I want to talk about is here on the iPad, set the technology right. And this comes back to the first developer because they usually decided or the CTO might decide it. But it's super important that we actually know if the technology we're choosing works for the use case we want. And for example, I mean, I just took some screenshots of other bridge builders, not the original ones, these are some clones. Yeah, so you can have, let's say, a structure built with wood and this whole thing might just work for a small bridge like here. Let's say you're choosing some kind of framework where you're really constrained on what you can do, but then you want more and then here is the, the area where it's gonna be super hard to implement this because it was just not planned for in the original framework. Or let's say, you want something much more flexible, let's say, for example, like, like this here with a lot of steel inside. It might work, but then you have structures that just need a certain way to be programmed in order to encompass all these flexibilities. These are just ab abstract examples, but it's just important that, they, that the technology actually works for the use case you want. Say you want to code a game, you don't use Ruby on Rails. You want to code a web app and be fast with that, you usually don't use Rust. Those are some things, some common sense choices. There is one very important point when talking with developers. Usually developers would want to code something that's fancy, that's new, that's a new technology. And usually those things should be weighted on a bit. The newest technology is usually, usually not the best choice early on in the project. But there are a couple of more things to take into account, which is probably subject to another video. If you want to see that video that we're eventually going to make, subscribe to this channel and see this coming in at one point. The fourth point is how you do anything is how you do everything. And this is this hits home because I have seen quality getting out of control by just not setting the right standards early on in the project. So let's say if there's a developer, and this is a perfect example here for the bridge builder. Let's say the first developer now codes something and they just, let's say they built some structure here. And let's say they forgot to put in the handrails. Let's say they don't do testing, right? So they don't have handrails. So this is this was just done a bit, but then they stopped. And then we kind of don't have the right handrails here. Oh no, nothing really good for the cars to drive on something. So the quality is just not on par. And then what the next developers will do. So let's say here are the people who are working on the project. So people here working on the project. Now the next person comes and the next person now has to code this thing here. And they would see, okay, it was done like this. I'm just gonna continue like that. So the quality problems that we have here early on the project, they would just go to the end of it. And then they might impact, or they will for sure impact the whole way the project was gonna get, get, get executed. Important is that this phrase here, how you do anything is how do you do, how you do everything. A developer, who codes an unimportant feature and does not include tests, probably also codes an important feature that doesn't include tests. Another thing that's important is to put infrastructure first. This might be a bit of a controversial point, but I have talked to a very smart guy, Friedrich. He, he's also in one of the interviews on my YouTube channel. So Friedrich said, when they onboard a new client, they will give him a staging and a production environment in the first two weeks. So this is how it looks like. Let's say you get a software made by Friedrich and you can you can find his contact. I think it's kanida.de. You can find his contact on my blog or email me and I'm gonna send it all to you. He's a, he's a brilliant engineer. What he basically told me is, let's say there's a project and this, this thing here, let's say this is just a one year project, right? So it's in the first two weeks, I mean, you cannot code everything in two weeks, but what he can do is he can put infrastructure in place so that we can do the demos. So what he would do is just lay a cable and connect the two dots here. And then it's much easier to give a demo because he says, hey, this is not really working, but we have already connected this thing here. So we can give you a demo within two weeks. And then it's gonna be much easier to just put something in here. And it's always, it's always already wired up. The demo is easy. Anytime you have an iteration, you give a new demo and the client can already see the progress much better. And this is in contrast to like hard waterfall projects where everything is planned up front and at one point it's gonna be all finished. The sixth point is very important to me, is limit abstractions. And um, 
Yeah, this has happened lately to me in a project where I didn't check on a developer and they basically what happened was the following. So the developer, let's say developer, great engineer, he stands here, but he doesn't have all the information. So basically he sees where we want to go. Okay, so the goal is clear. He has the goal, he looks at it. Limiting abstractions is the sixth point that is super important because I had this, I've seen this lately in a project and I really want to explain what happened. So there is a, the engineer, the first engineer here, because we're early on in the project and the first engineer sees exactly, okay, they want to reach this goal here. So let's mark it as the goal. So this is our goal. Okay, developer spots it. Okay, great. Now the developer does not exactly know this area because it was not defined. So this is like maybe in an agile way. So the developer thinks, okay, so he assumes all this water here looks like this, right? So he thinks, okay, great. The water looks like this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna make the standard piece here. And the standard piece looks like this. And then we're gonna add another standard piece and the third standard piece. Okay, they all look the same. And as they all look the same, he thinks, okay, what we're gonna do now, so we're gonna make this this kind of um, construction site ground where he builds a factory for this. So he builds a certain crane, I don't know, let's say he builds a crane that makes these things. Okay, so the crane is able to produce these things very fast. This is a so-called abstraction. You're using a predefined component and it's gonna be very cheap to use it because it's already been worked on, it's already defined and finished and then you can churn out a lot of them. Okay, so now the developer thinks, okay, great, we're gonna put these things in here. But what actually happens is that there is something there where it doesn't work anymore because here the ground is more deep. And now what the developer does, okay, so basically now the developer has two choices. He could either scrap the whole thing and start new and just do it in a simpler way, or he can modify the abstractions and say, okay, we just have to do it a bit bigger and some exceptions and then maybe go underground a bit. Okay, so now the crane is much more complex. So he wastes a lot of time on the crane. And then he has this thing that goes a bit deeper and works like this, but now it's even deeper. And now he has to, this whole thing, his whole concept doesn't work out anymore. And the next developers then see that, and say, okay, shit, this actually doesn't work. Now the next developer, now has a choice of just doing a custom thing. Just don't do this anymore, but like just go with like another pole or another, kind of thing that he wants to build makes his own thing or even worse if the next developer thinks okay this is actually really bad i'm going to make another crane and another crane is going to make this structure and now we have two competing standards and this is the point where the software project could already be compromised so if that happens there need to be a lot of refactoring and this is why in general early on in software projects the abstractions should be should be very limited and now to the last point, and this is important to me as well, because I've built many software projects for clients and they were never able to use them because they just didn't really understand their customers in the first place. So in order to circumvent that is the best, the best thing you can do in order to make sure that it really works out in the long run is try to give something to the customer without any coding. So maybe we don't need a bridge. Maybe we just need a boat and once the boat works and we really sure we really sure we want to have like a like a rocket boat right then we can build software behind it these are learnings from more than 15 years of professional experience making software projects if you want to know our process click this video where we lay out how we make software projects